Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up Selenium Grid with Docker Compose. So let's get started. So first off, our prerequisite remains the same. So these are the same ones that I have mentioned in my previous Docker videos. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to do that so that you can understand how Docker works with Selenium and how you can set up Selenium Grid with Docker. So I'll quickly go over this. You need to have some basic familiarity with Docker. You obviously need to have Docker installed and you need a Selenium script which you can use to execute your Docker test on. So now let's take a look at why we need to use Docker Compose. So the main advantage that you get with Docker Compose is that you don't need to remember any Docker commands. Now what that means is if you remember in our previous video when we were setting up docker grid we using this all commands we had to do this we had to do docker network create grid to set up our network then we had to set up our selenium hub and then we had to set up our chrome and firefox images and we also had to make sure they are within the same network they're using the same host so there was quite a bit of work that went in here now this is fine if you're doing it let's say once to try to set that up but let's say if you have multiple team members that are working on some particular project, now every one of them will have to remember these commands, right? And if you make some typo here, some mistakes, your test won't run and your Docker won't actually get spun up. So to avoid all of this, we can use Docker Compose. With Docker Compose, you don't have to remember any of these commands. And with the help of Docker Compose, you can also run multiple Docker containers together. So over here, for example, I can have my Selenium Hub, I can have Node Chrome, I can have Node Firefox, Node Opera, all of them running together within the same network. Now, all I have to do is set up one script, which will do all of this work for me, and then everyone can go ahead and execute that script. So essentially, the way you will spin up your Docker Compose is by doing just this command, which is Docker Compose up, and that's it. Inside that Docker Compose file, you can do anything that you want, which you need to do to spin up your Docker containers or images. So in our case, we will be spinning up grid with multiple browsers using just one single command. And this is a pretty easy command for everyone to remember, right? Compared to using, let's say, this command, which obviously it's much more complicated and you need to remember so many things here and you may make some typo here versus comparing it with this one right over here. That's pretty straightforward. You just say Docker Compose up, it will actually point it out to your Docker Compose file and in your Docker Compose, you can actually set up what you need to do to actually spin up your, let's say, browser or set up your grid, or maybe if you want to do something else with it, you can do that as well. So now let's take a look at how does this Docker Compose file will look like. All right, so I'm back here in Docker Selenium GitHub repository. And here, this is what we were using. First of all, in our previous video, what we did was we used this Docker networking, right? And these are the same commands that I was showing you just now, which is setting up the network and doing all of this thing. But if you want to use Docker Compose, we can actually scroll down. And this is, as you can read here, it's the simplest way to start your grid with Docker Compose. And for that, let's say we have version two here and I will go to version three, which is the latest. So this is all you need to do. You need to pretty much copy this file and paste it. And what this will do is set up your Selenium hub. It will also set up your Chrome and Firefox. And if you want Opera as well, we can set that up as well. And to spin that up, we will just run single command, which is Docker Compose up. So I'm going to copy this and we will walk through what exactly each of these commands are doing. I will copy this. And in my VS code, this is the test that we were going through, right? Which is test parallel.js. This I went created this in my previous video. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to do that so that you understand what we are doing here. So over here, what I'm going to do is create a new file and I'm going to name this one. Make sure you name this correctly. So you've got to do this docker dash compose dot yaml. I'm going to do YAML and there you go. I've created Docker Compose YAML file. Now here I'm going to paste the Docker Compose commands that we just copied and I will scroll up. And this is the comment section. I can remove this. We don't need that. All right. So I've pasted, every, pasted everything. All right. So I've pasted everything over here. So, so far we have just been running our test in Chrome and Firefox. So I'm going to remove Opera here because we don't need that. But if you want, you can keep that here as well. All right, now this is our simple Docker Compose file. Now this is doing exactly what we were trying to do with our Docker commands, which we were running using the Docker networking. So if you notice, we have first of all, the Docker Compose version, which is version three, that's the latest right now. Then we are saying that all of these are our services. So in Docker Compose, you can specify the services, and then you need to give a name for your service. Here, I'm giving it Selenium Hub. Then you have to tell what is the image you're using. It's the same thing that we were doing with our uh, Selenium Hub image that we were using when we were running our Docker command. 
So I've put that over here. That's my image name. The next one is my container name. So here the container name get me, let's say Selenium Hub. The reason this is important is because we will be using this container and container name over here in Chrome and Firefox. And then we have to specify our ports. So obviously we wanted to run on port 4444. So we have specified that as well. And the next is we have to spin up our Chrome browser. So same way we have to specify our image. Then we have to set up our volume. The reason we are doing this so that we can share um, so that we don't run into any memory issues. That's why this is important to do that by setting volume over here. And now we are doing that it depends on Selenium Hub. What that means is if for some reason Selenium Hub cannot start, then these things won't even get started because we are saying this one actually depends on Selenium Hub. So we have added that dependency there. And then we are putting that environment. And this is the same thing that we did with our Docker networking as well. So we are saying hub host equals Selenium Hub, which is the name that we put over here. And then we have provided our port for the hub as well, which is 4444. Now the Firefox one is exactly the same. The only difference is we have changed the actual image from node chrome we have changed it to node firefox that's pretty much it now if you remember from the previous video one thing that we did was create a docker network now if i let's say go over to over here you can notice we did docker network create grid that is something we are not doing over here right here we have just specified a selenium hub chrome firefox and that's pretty much it and we are linking them together but the reason we are not doing the networking is because in docker compose all of this are within the same network so we don't have to say that, oh, this network you need to get created and then you need to link it with Selenium Hub and Chrome and Firefox. Since we're using the same file, the Docker Compose will create one network where all of these services will get started. So that's another advantage we get with using Docker Compose. All right, so our Docker Compose file is ready. Let's try to run this and see how it goes. I'm gonna pull up my terminal. In my terminal, I'm already in this directory, which is Selenium Docker test. That's the directory I've created here. And in that directory, under the root file, I have docker compose.yaml. Now to run that, I have to do docker-compose, and I can put up over there. So that's it. All you have to do is put docker compose up, and then press enter, and it will go ahead and start up all of the services. So you can notice it's starting up Selenium Hub, Firefox, and Chrome as well. There you go, right? So it says all of this are set up. The node is registered to the hub and ready to use. Perfect. So this was started on port 4444 right over here. So I can actually go here and take a look at how exactly that's working. So let's go here, do localhost 4444. So this is my grid that has just been spun up through Docker Compose. If I go to console, there you go. We just have our grid set up literally with just one command. And we have our web driver Chrome as well as web driver Firefox both set up right over here. So our, both our browsers are ready and we can run our tests and both of the tests should run up in each of these individual browser. So let's head over to VS Code and try to run our test. In my test parallel here, I was running my test on Chrome, Firefox, Chrome, Firefox. I'm running it parallel, so let's do that. So here I will copy this tab and in fact, I will duplicate this. Now I will try to do node test dash parallel.js. Moment I do this, I'm gonna hit enter here. There you go. It's saying two requests are waiting and the two of them are already busy right now. So this one is busy, this one is busy and we are running test, let's say four times here for two for each browser. I'm gonna hit enter here again. There you go, the two slots went away. Now these two are busy. And I will hit enter again, it should be fine. There you go, now it's fine. And if I go to my terminal, you can see it ran in Chrome, Firefox, Chrome, Firefox. So we just ran our test using our uh, Selenium grid console, which we spun up using Docker Compose. So guys, going back to our Docker Compose file, and I just wanna show you the advantages we have by using Docker Compose over running those Docker commands, right? So with Docker commands, you have to remember those commands. People might make typos in those commands, and this is something which is gonna be like a bit more complicated if there are some changes to that particular commands, right? But instead, when you're using Docker Compose, you don't have to worry about any of those commands. So someone who's not even familiar with Docker, you can just give them this command, just do Docker Compose up and then run it. All that will do is set up your grid and every kind of networking and the volume and anything that you're setting up in your environment, everything will get set up and they just have to run one single command. And the best part about this is you can actually push this in your GitHub repository and you will push that up. So people, whoever will clone that repository, they can just run this command Docker Compose up and it will start your grid and they can start running the test right away.
So let's move on to our next topic, which is how we can set up parallel execution with Docker Compose. So the first way of doing this is by updating our Docker Compose file. So we have done this in our previous video where we added multiple node max instances and node max sessions, which allowed us to add multiple Chrome instance or maybe let's say Firefox instance, right? But we did that through our Docker commands when the networking Docker commands we were running it through. Versus over here, what we can do is instead put that same command, which is node max instances and node max session in our Docker Compose file. That's one way to do this. Another way to do this is we can dynamically increase the nodes by using Docker scale. So we can, let's say, add in more nodes by doing Docker scale. And I will show you both of those commands. And once we do that, you will have something like this. So for the second one, you're going to have, let's say, a grid setup. And you're going to see we have one Chrome here, one Chrome here, one Chrome here, and then three Firefox over here as well. Now, this is done via Docker scale. And while the other one, node max instance, would add it right over here in the same web driver. So I'm going to show you both the ways, and you can decide which one works for you best. And I can also tell you which one you can use in whichever scenarios. So let's head back to VS Code and add in node max instances. OK, so in my Docker Compose file, in the Chrome right over here, let's say if I want to increase the sessions and instances for Chrome, I can do this by doing node max instances. And then I have to say how many instances, let's say three for node uh, for the Chrome. And I can do the same thing for the sessions as well. And I can say maybe sessions. And the sessions are three as well. And for example, let's say for Firefox, we will just leave it as it is. So we're going to keep one for Firefox, which is default, and we have just set it up for three for Chrome. Now I'm going to go back here, and then in my Docker Compose, I will stop this. I will do Control C to stop this, and it's spot, uh, stopping my Docker Compose. And once this is done, what I can do is again do Docker Compose up and press Enter. All right, so our Docker Compose is up now. So I will go back to Google Chrome. And here I'm going to refresh. Now there you go. The moment I refresh, you can notice for Firefox, we just have one instance right over here, which is obviously what we have selected. We'd kept a default. We didn't add any multiple instances. But for Chrome, we can see that we have three instances right over here. That means three Chrome sessions and three Chrome instances that we have set it up using our Docker Compose file. And you can do the same thing for Firefox as well. You can add in multiple node max instances and node max session, and you can add that one over here. So for example, by default, if you want to go with three, three on each, you can do that quite easily. Now, if you remember, I've showed you that there are two ways of doing this. One is through Docker Compose, and the another way is using the Docker scale command. So let's take a look at how that would work. So here, I'm just going to do again Control C here to stop this. So the way scale command would work is I can dynamically add more nodes. So let's say by default, you have three nodes for Chrome already, right? But you don't want to actually go ahead and update your Docker Compose file. Now, if you don't want to update your Docker Compose file, you just want to dynamically add more nodes. You can do that as well using the Docker Compose scale command. So the way it would work is you would do Docker Compose, and then you do scale. Well, first you would do Docker Compose up, and then you would do dash dash scale, and then you need to tell which exactly service you want to scale up. In my case, let's say I know Chrome already has three sessions. So I will do, do scale up my Firefox. I will do scale Firefox equals three. And I will hit enter. And then you're going to notice something different this time. All right. So if, if you can notice here, we have Chrome, which is underscore one. So we just have one uh, registered hub right over here. And but for Firefox, we have two more nodes. We have Firefox 2 and Firefox 3. So obviously, we have Firefox 1, but we added two more over here. And this will look a little bit different once I will refresh here. I'm going to hit Enter and take a look at this. So we have three Firefox nodes right over here. And then we have one Chrome node where we have three browser instances. So now let's try to run our test and take a look at how this would work this time. I'm going to do the same thing, node test parallel.js. And then here I will hit Enter. You can notice it's been up to Firefox. It's selling one of them is free right here, which is fine. I will hit enter. There you go. That one is busy as well. And we essentially have our test running in both Chrome and Firefox. Perfect. If I go back here, you can notice a Chrome session was there. It ran and then we have our Firefox there as well. So this is how you can use Docker Compose to dynamically add in more sessions. And that's how you can take advantage of parallel test execution. Now, this one really depends, let's say, how many you want to add in 
kind of depends on the infrastructure you're using. So let's say if the machine you're used running your test on, maybe that can be a cloud server. If it supports adding, let's say, six Chrome browsers or six Firefox browsers, you can probably do that. But if you feel like that is not working and you might run into, let's say, some test flakiness, then you might probably start off with like two Firefox and two Chrome and see how that is working. And then slowly you can increase it as long as your machine supports that many browsers and instances. All right, guys, so to quickly sum up, you can use Docker commands to run multiple Docker containers together. You can also, let's say, spin up your grid with multiple browsers using just one individual command. And that's the advantage you have. So anyone in your team members who, let's say, are not familiar with Docker, they can just run this Docker Compose up and they don't have to worry about what exactly is that Docker file doing or that Docker Compose file doing. They will run this command and it will spin up any kind of services that they want to spin up. In our case, we did it for grid and we spun up multiple browsers. And we also looked at how we can take advantage of parallel execution using the help of Docker Compose, as well as how we can dynamically increase the nodes by doing Docker scale as well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, do let me know in the comment section below. And please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, as that's how I know you guys are really enjoying my content. Also, if you want, you can subscribe to my mailing list as that's how you will know about all the latest blog posts and videos that I put out each week, as well as the latest content that I'm planning on as well. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I will see you all in the next one.